Well, good Wednesday morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Thank you for joining this morning. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods here. Oh my goodness, man. Time has flown by. You know, it's crazy because um, I bought this shot clock, I mean, a uh, countdown clock some years back uh, on Amazon. People have asked, where'd you get the yeah, Amazon? You buy everything on Amazon. Although I will say this on Amazon, Amazon has gotten to be now that they're not necessarily the lowest price on stuff. Just letting you know they're the most convenient because that shit comes to your door. And now a lot of times they'll say that, oh, it's going to be there tomorrow. And now it's Friday and stuff like that. But but be that as it may, they've gotten so big and all that. Because um, the door bellows for my washing machine, uh, it was $149 on Amazon. It was going to take five days to get it. Turns out I found the uh, appliance place, uh, Tribbles, that's a couple miles from me. I actually had it in stock for $80. So... Just, it pays to definitely shop around because you can find some good stuff sometimes at, at a lower price, maybe even more convenient than what you think. And, you know, Stephen Jones might take note to that sometimes, too, because, you know, sometimes you can find some good value for people. And um, anyway, anyway, I, I digress. I digress. The Cowboys, of course, yesterday, big day for the Cowboys. Um, we ended up having a scare with Tyler Smith. I was doing our fantasy football uh, League One draft, and, you know, Miss Jackie sent me a text that said, Tyler Smith hurt, not practicing. And I'm looking during the live stream while we're drafting players and stuff, and you see him, you know, uh, in shorts and uh, jersey and stuff, standing in the back of the end zone. And I don't see any knee brace. I don't see ice. I don't see trainers with him. I'm like, what's going on here? Um... But by the time we got through the uh, full stream, it was just kind of, he tweaked his ankle a little bit. Not a high ankle sprain, not anything serious or anything, just a little minor hiccup. Um, it might be from, it, his, his ankle might just be tired from bulldozing so many guys where he played 30 plays um, on Saturday night looking really, really good. And it's just a matter of time, I, I'm, I'm assuming, before he'll be named a starter. Um, so we had that last night, and of course the Cowboys cut the roster down to the 80-man uh, um, size right now. Uh, there'll be final cuts will be next week. Uh, they got rid of kicker Laram, uh, you know, Laram H. They got rid of Jabril Robinson, wide receiver. They got rid of Quadrin Mosley. Uh, they got rid of Christian Sam and Jeremy Sprinkles. So the roster is now down to 80. They have one more practice, we talking about practice, um, where the fans can come in. After that, all the practices are closed. Uh, no more Dallas Cowboys Roadshow, um, which is fine. That means we're getting to the meat of actually getting ready for the season. So that's where we are as far as those moves. The Cowboys will be on the practice field, of course, today, playing Seattle on Saturday. They will not be playing any starters. Uh, basically, if you're playing on Friday night, you are a guy who is fighting for a job and playing position. They will not be playing any starters. So that's where you can really understand who truly is a starter. So um, my question here, and, and I'm going to actually work on this a little bit more here, is kind of a crazy question here, is, is the Cowboys offensive line better this year, and it's still early to tell, are going to be better this year than it was potentially last year without Lyle Collins and without Connor Williams. That is the question. Now, if you ask me, I will say a resounding yes. I have been, you know, we've been, I realized this last night listening to Rashid. Listening to Rashid, um, who will spout the narrative that you get from ESPN. He is still talking about, well, Dak Prescott's Mr. Garbage Time. You know, he gets all these points and stuff in garbage time. Not understanding that garbage time technically means 
you're out of it. The team is clearing the bench and bringing other people. They're playing pre-vet. And on the flip side of this, if you're saying that the Cowboys were in garbage time and that's why Dad made up a lot of his yards, then you have to say that same thing then for Diggs, who gave up a lot of yards because, you know, you're playing prevent defense. So you can't have it both ways. But I'll go through and say, well, are you saying that um, Drew Brees didn't have garbage yards? Having four years in, you know, in a row that were seven and nine? That they were behind in a lot of games because their defense, you know, couldn't stop anybody. You know, when they had, you know, bad teams in their division, Tampa Bay and Atlanta, you know, Tampa Bay before they became Tampa Bay with Tom Brady, Carolina. You could look at, say, Aaron Rodgers, who has Detroit every year. So, you know, those are always garbage yards in the Bears and Minnesota. You could look at Tom Brady, most of his career, where everybody in his division was under 500. The AFC North, I mean, uh, East, was basically the NFC Least before the NFC Least became the NFC Least. Buffalo, Miami, and Jets every year were always some of the worst teams in football. So that narrative is always there, so be that as it may. But what the talking heads have done is they pounded in our head that the Cowboys offensive line is coming back, you know, is taking steps back because they lost two starters in Connor Williams and Lyle Collins. But I will counter that to the point of saying Connor Williams, who was benched for Connor McGovern and was the NFL leading penalty getter that I'm not sure that that was a great offensive lineman. Now, he was not the weak, considered the weakest link. Biotish was considered the weakest link last year, but hopefully he's gotten better. I will say that even though he has not been named a starter right now, provided there is no problem with his ankle, that Tyler Smith is already an improvement on the offensive line than Connor Williams. Seeing some of the plays that we've had already with um, Tyler Smith, seeing him able to wheel his ass around, seeing him literally being able to blow people out of the point of attack, that you already realize that he is an upgrade big time over what we had with Connor Williams. Connor Williams, too many times, was being manhandled. I, I doubt we'll see. Tyler Smith get manhandled. I, I just don't have a feeling that there's too many guys that are going to be able to lift him up and put him in Dak Prescott's lap. And as far as Lyle Collins, love Lyle Collins. Met him uh, early in his career and stuff. One of the nicest people that you will meet, you know, does things to the community. It, it, it literally lights up when there are kids and stuff around. You know, great guy. And has played some good time. But I think the Cowboys kind of screwed him up from going from guard to tackle back and forth and things like that. To me, he's really a better guard, but see, guards don't get the money like the tackles, and he wanted to be the tackle. But has hence had injury issues as well as missing tests. So let's go back to the fact that he missed seven games he did not start last year. And during those seven games that he did not start, when Terrence Steele was playing his position, that was actually the best time of the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. It was once he got put back into the lineup and Terrence Steele went to the other side. We then had problems in two tackle positions than just one with Tyron Smith. So I honestly believe that Terrence Steele can hold down the right. I believe that Zach Martin is still as great as he is. Zach Martin, who has, this is an amazing statistic, Zach Martin, who has more Pro Bowl appearances than holding penalties in his career. You don't have to worry about him. Biotish is fine if you have two good guards on each side of him. But the problem on offensive line is you can't have two bad players on the same side by side. It does not work. You will get killed. You can have a lesser center if you have two good guards. And we have two good guards in Zach Martin and Tyler Smith. Of course, Tyron Smith 
when healthy, is one of the best ones in football. So collectively, if you look at that offensive line right there, potentially is better than last year's offensive line. You feel that Tyler Biotish should be better, but I, I got to tell you, Fornit, he looks good. He's inexperienced, but he's strong, and he can actually move. So I'm actually feeling better even about the center position that if Yadis does not play well, we've got a second option. The problem for the Cowboys' offensive line is fragility. The best backup we probably have right now is Connor McGovern, which means then you're going to take Taylor Smith to go to tackle. That might work. That's probably better than going to Ty Naseki and reading Tampa Bay. I read a little article yesterday. Uh, the Tampa Bay's coach was saying, we're not hitting the panic button on the offensive line and just going to grab somebody just to grab somebody because there's not a lot of great options out there, which is true. The reality is, is if you're a really good player, you're on a roster and teams aren't giving up on you. The only way you're going to get somebody who may be a premium one at this point is to trade for somebody. Um, and there's no guarantee that somebody's going to trade one of their best offensive linemen. So they're looking in-house to try and find guys to replace the four that may be missing for the game. Uh, Tristan Wurst, that they're hoping he'll be okay for week one with the oblique strain. We'll see. Uh, but if that strain isn't completely healed and you got some speed coming on the outside there of Micah Parsons, yeah, good luck with that. So there's not a lot of good options there. So you've got to be able to coach the guys up to end up being the ones to replace. The Cowboys offensive line, if healthy, isn't anywhere near as bad as the narrative that's been put at you because they keep saying, well, you lost Lyle Collins and you lost Connor uh, Williams and they don't understand that we already had Lyle Collins' replacement already playing and that we upgraded with our first-round pick there. Anyway, let's hear from ESPN, the experts on, uh, they got a little short thing here on ESPN, get up this morning, uh, talking about who is in the best position to win the NFC East. Elliot, what kind of Zeke Elliott are they going to get out of there? Which team you think uh, is best positioned then to win the NFC East, Harry? I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. When you look at this team, especially offensively, uh, they had the number one rushing offense in the National Football last year. That's not going to drop off because I think they have the best offensive line. If not in football, they're top two or top three. Um, not to mention, I think their wide receiver core in this division is the best. The addition of A.J. Brown, a guy that's a big body guy that you can just throw the football up to and say, you know what, go get it for me, make a play. He's that type of guy. Um, last but not least, I just look at Jalen Hurts. I think his surroundings is going to allow him to have the best season in the NFC East as a quarterback. So that's how I feel about this team. But you look at the defensive side, that defensive line, they have some dogs over there. They added Jordan Davis to that. They added N'Kobe Dean to the linebacking core as well. So I'm high on the Philadelphia Eagles right now. And a lot of teams in the NFC better be watching out for them. As you were speaking, I'm looking over at Sam, and he's looking at you like, you out your mind. Uh, what do you think, Sam? <laughs> well, I, I, just go, I just go back to last year, and I, I think about how, remember how the Eagles made their playoff run? We're like, man, the Eagles, they're winning, winning. A lot of those teams weren't playoff teams. Like Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts' teams, when he was at quarterback for the Eagles last year, they were 0-6 versus playoff teams. Boom! And so, yes, they got better defensively and offensively. But I also remember that playoff game versus Tampa Bay, and it didn't look good. And so, for me, I think the Cowboys are still best positioned to win the NFC East, even though there are question marks at receiver for the Cowboys, even though they lost one of their defensive stars in Randy Gregory, mm -hmm. I still think they're best positioned because this is year two in Dan Quinn's defense. And, and in all reality, Dak, Dak Prescott, I believe, is a better quarterback right now. Tim, let me give you the final word on this. Uh, which team is in the best position to win this division? I remember we had a discussion, and you said the one concern you had with Jalen Hurts was the pocket presence sometimes mm -hmm. with him, obviously in the accuracy. What do you think? Well, here's what I would say is, you know, 
the far and away best quarterback in the division is Dak Prescott, far and away, in terms of, uh, you know, everything that he can do as a player, how good he is pre-snap, how good he is post-snap, how good of a passer he is. Uh, and truth be told, in the NFL, you still need to be able to do that. And so, uh, look, I'm going to give the advantage overwhelmingly to Dallas in that area. And I think this, look, Dallas, let's not forget how much they improved a season ago on the defensive side Amen. of the ball. Amen. Uh, there's no reason to believe that they're still not getting better. I get it. They lost Randy Gregory, but I, I do think that, uh, you know, year one of Dan Quinn with some young players was a pretty good start. And I, I think they're going to build off of that. So uh, I think Dallas is the best team in the division. And I think that they should be the favorite to win it. All Thank right. you for watching ESP. All right. So now they're still picking now the Dallas Cowboys as the now or now beginning to pick the Dallas Cowboys. Some people are still on the Eagles bandwagon. It's interesting that, you know, we're, we're actually, somebody brought up the fact that Hurts against playoff teams didn't do so well in those games. We'll see, but there's going to be a lot of pressure on Hurts. And I'm wondering, are they making up Jalen Hurts, um, pumping up a lot more than deserved? We'll probably look at that a little bit later because, well, of course, it'll piss off Eagle fans. Although, Eagle fans, I don't know where you've been. I've missed you. You slowed your roll now that we're getting closer to the season. We only sit 15 days, 9 hours, um, 43 minutes, and 50 seconds away from the season. You know how we roll. Our folks here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing.